hey, get ready, because now we're going to do what I think is one of the most fun, but also the maybe one of the more challenging things here in your milling setup. We're going to make our second operation vise. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a version of this Kurt vise that has big soft jaws on it. And then we're going to create the pocket, the reverse image of the part that we're going to use to hold our semi-finished piece from our first uh, our first operation, our first vise. So what we'll do is I'm going to insert this Kurt DX4 soft jaws vise into my assembly. So I'm going to right click, insert into current design. It shows up, and I am uh, as all part of this one operation. I'm I'm going to kind of get it sort of oriented, right? So I'm just going to drag it over here, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees because I, you know, want my vices all kind of aligned in a similar way. I will say OK. Now this is not assembled yet. It it still can float all over the place, and I'm going to follow a similar technique. I'm going to assemble. I'm going to create a joint a rigid joint, and I am going to use the origins to tie things together. So I'm going to click on the origin of my vise, and then I'm going to click on the origin of my upper level assembly, and then I'm, I'm just going to displace it some amount, I don't know, 24 inches looks good, I'll say OK, and we're set. We are set. Our second operation vise is in position and it can't move, it's constrained, but I do want to break the link. So I'm going to right click on it, break the link. Perfect, now I have both vices here. I have my first operation vice, I have my second operation vice. And because these are parametric vices, if I go to modify, change parameters, you'll see that I have, uh, I have a couple of things. Some of these parameters were from the, were from the original vice that we brought in. This one, SJ jaw gap, that's soft jaws jaw gap, it's set to 15 thou. So what I have now is a 15 thou gap between my jaws. So I'm, you know, if I wanted it to be a 0.25, I would type that in, it would move. But for what I'm doing, I would make a 15 thou piece of shim stock. I would clamp down on that. And that's where I would be when I machine that vice. We'll say OK. All right, vice is in position. Now let's get into the strategy of machining the cavity into this vice. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the part to uh, create this. So we if we look over here, right? We see how our part is going to be fitting in our raw stock, right? We're going to machine all this, but we're going to have this uh, piece on the bottom. Some people call this the hat. Uh, so if we can imagine this being flipped over and into this, right? That's you got to keep that in mind. So let's, let's bring in a, let's, let's bring this component, this connecting rod into our vice subassembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my vice, my second operation vice, and I'm going to isolate it. That's all I want to look at right now. And I am going to bring in my connecting rod into this uh, vice assembly. So I'm going to right click, insert into current design. And there it is. It's kind of flopping around over there. Uh, in in one step, I'm going to kind of orient it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, and I know I just need to rotate it 180 degrees, turn it upside down, and I'll say OK. Now, we're still not assembled yet. Or we, need, we need to get this component in position. So what I want to do is I want to get this thing kind of like symmetrical, you know, I, I want this component to be like right in the center of those vice jaws. So what's, oh, 
And before I forget, before I forget, I want to break this link. Let me break that. So now that component is self-contained inside this soft job ice assembly. Uh, so in order to assemble this in the exact center of the vice jaws, I need to create just a little bit of geometry. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm just going to make a sketch. So what I'm going to do, I have my vice active. I'm going to say create sketch. I'm going to create it right on the top of that soft jaw. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to use project. I'm going to be in my specified entities mode. And I am going to project the face of these two soft jaws up onto my sketch plane. Say OK. So now I have and some geometry there. And actually, I don't love everything about that. And the reason why I don't love it, I got a couple extra lines. And what happened, let's see here, let's finish the sketch. Let's delete that sketch. What happened, if I hide this, when I clicked on that face, it, it sees these holes in there. So that's why it, it Create it multiple lines. So there's a cleaner way for me to do it. Let's go back and do this similar thing. I'm going to say create sketch right there. And uh, grid shows me what I'm sketching on. Back to create, project. And what I'm going to do instead of instead of picking that whole face, I'm going to just pick this edge. So we'll project that edge and we'll do the same thing here on this other soft jaw there we go so now i have two nice very clean lines and what i can do now is i can draw a line from the midpoint of this to the midpoint of that. So let's say line and see that it's automatically there's my midpoint snap. Midpoint snap. And what I'll do is I'll say create point. I'm just going to drop this point right there and I'll use the midpoint constraint. I'm going to say you are on the midpoint of you. Boom. So now I know without, there's no confusion. That point right there is exactly in the center of the two faces of my vice jaw. And that's exactly what I want. If I change my jaw gap to one inch, see what happens? Everything grows parametrically. No matter what I do, that point is right in the center of the face of those two jaws. So put it back to 0.015. Great. Awesome. Now let's let's get our connecting rod component assembled somewhere close to being in the position. I'm going to do an assemble joint. I'm going to do a rigid. And I'm just going to kind of hover over this top face. Go down control. I'm going to pick this point right here that kind of represents the center of that face. I'm going to come over here to my little point that I just created. And you see what happened? It, it assembled that uh, component in there. Now, I know that I can't sink that part that deep into the vice jaws. I need to have it stick out of the vice jaws a little bit. Um, how much? I, it's kind of up to me. And uh, I don't know. Let's type in one. 
We can try that. Let's go with that. Let's say OK. So when it's all said and done, I'm going to hide my sketches here. I don't need to see the sketches. When it's all said and done, I can kind of visualize you know, that part with the extra stock sticking above it in my vice draws. But we, we need to create the cavity that uh, is going to exist in the vice jaws that we're going to use to hold this part. So what's the best way to do that? There's a couple of ways we could go down this road. We could, uh, we could just project the silhouette of this component, and we could use the silhouette of the component to cut a pocket down into those vice jaws. Uh, we could do that. The, the challenge with that is, if we look here, the uh, bottom of this has, you know, steps in it, right? So if we just projected the silhouette and cut to one depth, uh, we'd have to come back and add some geometry. And, you know, there's there's no getting out of it. We're going to have to do a little bit of work here. So I'm, I'm going to do what makes sense to me and show you that. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to come down here to our connecting, this connecting rod that we brought in. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to expand it. Now we have the body that exists that we we only have one body in this connecting rod. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to right click and paste. I'm going to paste an exact copy of that body right in position. The the two are on top of each other. The exact same thing. Uh, the second body I'm going to call this um, uh, body modified. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to modify this this body. If, if you know what a, like a sinker EDM is, kind of thinking of it like that. I'm going to like use this body as a tool to cut the pocket out of the vice jaws for me. Uh, like, like the same way a sinker EDM would sink a pocket into a, a chunk of full steel to make a mold or something. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this, this body right here to uh, cut the jaws, essentially. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, just to make this simple right now, I'm going to isolate this. So all I, all I see is that. Uh, I'm going to hide the origin. I don't care about that. Let's start doing some modifications to this thing. We have a lot of tools. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is come here to modify, uh, simplify, remove face. And I am going to take that out of there. Um, I'll do the same thing on the top. Just keep it simple. I'm going to take this hole out of it. And let's let's go ahead and let's work on this end of it. I'm going to okay, found that, found that, found that. I'm going to remove that. Okay, getting simpler and simpler. I'm going to remove. Let's see. This is where it can get. I have to watch the simplify tool. I'm going to try to remove this face. And. This face, let's see if it's one. Okay, let's say remove. Okay, that worked. Um, I want to get rid of all this stuff too. Really, I just want to get rid of this. But let's see what it does. When I pick this fillet, it found everything. All right, fine. We'll remove those. But we have to be careful because remember, our part looks like this. So we, you know, if we cut this shape, we're going to uh, not be able to fit our part into it. So we need to fix that. The other thing I want to do, is I want to bring this face down to this level. So I'm going to just close this for a second. I'm going to go to extrude, take this face, say distance to object, right? Um, Let's throw some fillets on here so we can make a pocket that we can actually machine. So let's, uh, let's see here, we'll fillet this edge and 
this edge. Oh, no. an inch. And then finally, we need to uh, make a little bit of adjustment here because, right, remember the, the thing we're holding has these fillets. So let, let's give ourselves some generous fillets here. Here's the fillet tool. We'll put a fillet there. And over here. I don't know what's going on. It's a fairly generous fillet. Let's accept that. And all right, so now we have a body that uh, is going to make the pocket to hold this part. Let's see what we can do with that. So let's go activate our Kurt Vice again, and let's uh, un unisolate things. Let's see. We have to unisolate our connecting rod. Okay, good. So now we can see that sort of this modified body stuck right down in our vice jaws. Let's go up here to modify split body. The bodies to split are going to be this jaw and that jaw. The splitting tool is going to be this modified body. I'm going to say OK. Then what I'm going to do is just temporarily, I'm just going to turn the eyeball off. Uh, now I have, I split, I split this, these two jaws up into different pieces. I need to get rid of those pieces that I don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click I'm going to say find in browser right there that that little piece right there I can right click I can either delete it or remove it I'll say remove right now it gets rid of that same thing here I can right click find in browser and there it is right click remove and lo and behold what do we have in there we have a cavity in our vice jaws that we can machine to hold our part and if we want to verify that, let's just uh, condense our browser here a bit. We can see what we're doing. Let's see here. Let's turn on our component. And instead of showing the modified body, let's show the body that we're going to, uh, that, you know, the part that we're going to hold. And um, it will fit in there. What we can do, we can go to inspect, we can say uh, section analysis, we can pick this face, and we can drag this face back, and you you can see that um, we are doing a great job at holding that part. There shouldn't be anything that interferes. This face will sit down to this edge. These faces will sit on this little raised pad. Uh, it should be great. So I'm going to cancel out of my section analysis, but now we have a really nice pocket that we can use uh, to hold this part as we flip it over into its second operation. So let's stop that video there, and we'll move on to the next step.